I want to talk a little bit about analytics or metadata analytics. <coughs> so what do, what do we actually mean by this? Um, this is really about answering questions about your data. So when you want to, when you want to go and find out how much space is, is used by this particular directory, the thing you do in the past would be you run du. Um, if you want to go and find all the files that have changed in the last hour, um, well, there's a find command that, that would have done that. Um, this, could be, this could be rsync, where it'll periodically go through and, and, and find the newer files and replicate it out, or backup catalog, as Pete was mentioning earlier. These things. These things used to work. <laughs> um, when you have tens of thousands or even a million files, <coughs> they're, they're still tractable. But as you have billions of files, um, the, it, we'll find out that they're definitely not. So let's, let's imagine that, that accessing a particular file, doing a stat on a file, <coughs> takes a millisecond. Um, if all your data is uncached and it's all on spinning disk, that's a really fast number. <laughs> if, uh, if it's all on SSD or it's all on cache, then that's a slow number. So, this is, uh, so when you're talking about large numbers of files, some of them will be cached, some will not. I figured this was a reasonable um, estimate to look at. So that actually means, obviously, 1,000 files per second. <laughs> Uh, you can you can access and, and do a stat on. Um, that's 3.6 million files per hour. And I'd be really happy if most scale-up NASs could do 3.6 million yeah. files per hour metadata scan. That would be good. That would mean my incremental backup would only take a day. That's 86 million files per day, 600 million files per week. Skip the month. We can go right to year. <laughs> I'm not going to go all the way to year. I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> files per month. Billion. That's, oh, sorry. That was billion. That's the month of January, or sorry, February. It's the 28th. <laughs> um, so when you have, if you have 100 million files, you can't spend a day doing an operation to get an answer, whatever that answer is that you're looking for. So, so let's talk about a little bit about what people do today to be able to actually try to get around this problem, which, which everybody has now. So let's, start by, let, let's, let's put up an example file system. So we have a slash, slash temp, just temp. Um, let's call it movies. And he'll have a file in there. F1, and he'll have three movies, M1, M2, and M3. No, no, not the Mission Impossible movies. <laughs> <laughs> so these, these things all have attributes on them. So let's, let's talk about, let's just do two attributes for this example. Um, we have a blocks attribute, which is the number of blocks used by the file. And, uh, and a C time attribute when it was last changed. So file one might have a, a blocks of 100 and a C time. I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually uh, use just today and yesterday on this because actually putting times is, uh, ends up getting confusing in the example. Um, the temp directory itself has a block count of one and a C time of, of yesterday. Actually, actually a C time of today. He'll have a block of one and a 
the time of yesterday. Blocks one, C time yesterday. So, and he may have 100 blocks. He may have 1,000 blocks. And he may have 1,000 blocks as well. So a common thing that people do today to get around this huge latency problem of, of not being able to do a DU or a find is they'll actually create an external database. So it'll actually do a, a depth first search throughout the entire file system. It'll go down, do a depth first, look at every single file in the file system, go up. And the entire time it's doing that, it's putting entries in the database for, for whatever it is that you want to be able to query. Um, Maybe you want to be able to be able to do a fast DU, or maybe you want to be able to find the files that have changed, or or other statistics. Everybody ends up doing this tree scan here, and then writing a, a query thing out here. So you end up having to write and maintain both sides of this code. The database itself has to scale. You have to have the indexes that you need for it. So it actually is kind of difficult to scale a database at this, the same size. You know, if, you, if you're getting into you know, 100 billion files, getting the, the database scaling is actually not even that easy. Um, Isn't but that what Cassandra's for? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are, there are, there are uh, uh, some solutions for that. But but the real problem is that this is still out of date. Um, if, it, if you have a billion files, it still takes you 10 days to do the scan. So your data in here is 10 days old. Um, you can't, if someone go, went and wrote a bunch of data last night, you have to wait 10 days to find out, to be able to actually do a query to be able to find that out. Um, so it ends up, it it's, becomes less and less useful to do this as time goes on. So another thing that people do is they'll do a parallel scanner. They'll have a bunch of different things going in parallel on the system to be able to populate this database faster. And, you actually, and that actually <coughs> works. You can, um, you can do a lot more stats of files in parallel than you can do single stream. Um, but then you end up having this huge IOPS problem. So you'll have, so you have two big problems here. Um, the out-of-date data and or or high IOPS um, for this. We've had some customers. We've had some customers that say that they start one of these scans every every thirty days and it never finishes, and they have other customers that that have a, a much more parallel scanner and they say that it uses thirty percent of their entire IOPS of their storage system just to do the scan all the time. So what we do is something different. We take the data that would have been inside this database and we actually put it inside the file system itself as aggregates. So an aggregate an aggregate is is a simple thing. It's a function. It's an unfortunate term if we're talking about file systems. <laughs> <laughs> it's a term that needs a new definition. Yes, it does. Well, you had that argument yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> you, you words have meanings and you can't change them. <clears throat> But for the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to continue to call it no, aggregate. You, 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 can, <laughs> you can continue to call them aggregates, and I will continue to think of some other vendor's term for aggregates and <laughs> be mildly nauseated. <laughs> so an aggregate is a function on a field. So, so an example would be total blocks as an aggregate. And 
And that would equal um, the plus function on the field blocks. And we may have a max C time aggregate. And this would, strangely enough, be the max function on the C time field. So if we, if we go back to this picture over here, individual files, the, the aggregates on, the, on the, the fields are the same as the field since there's only one item in it. But the directories end up having um, interesting aggregates. So for this particular, so for temp, he had his aggregate for blocks, or total blocks, is the sum of these two. So that would be 101. The aggregate for movies over here for total blocks would be 2201. The total blocks here is 2,303. <laughs> Make sure I do this. And then the C times here, so the max C time is, in this particular case, is today. The max C time over here is yesterday. That's the, the, the newest one that we see. And the max C time up here is today. So having these aggregates in the, in, the, in the file system actually allow us to do some really interesting things. So what, opera so what operation do we do and, what, and how do they work? So if we want to do an operation here and so we, let's say we want to do du here. The thing that we can do with these aggregates is, well, we actually have the answer directly for du. So we return the number immediately. We've pre-computed this, this in this system. Um, if instead you want to go find all the files newer than, than uh, written in the last day. To find the files you've written in the last day, you'll look up at the, at the root and you'll see, well, what's my max C time? Oh, that's today. OK, that means that something in this entire tree was written today. And I look over at temp, and I say, oh, it's max C time is today. So something in temp has been written today. And I go down here to file one, and, it's in, and, it's, uh, and it was written today. So that goes in my set. And then I go back up, and then I look down at movies, and I look at max C time. And that's set, and that's set at yesterday. And now I don't have to, I, now I know that nothing inside the movies directory was updated today, and so I can stop my search. I don't have to look through anything else. So there could be a billion files down here. It could be a huge directory structure, and I've just truncated the search directly. So Sounds what like you an alpha beta search or something like that, a game tree search kind of thing, you know? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. You're, you're, you're aggregating the data at each of the nodes in the directory, so you don't have to do the search below that directory. Exactly. That information. Yeah. Exactly. Are you, are you recalculating that data every time you write a block? Ah. So hence, every write then generates, depending on how deep down the tree it is, it's then generating a whole load of additional work all the way up the tree. And so the deeper it is, the more workload it generates. Is that right? So we do that, but we do it in a lazy fashion. So the, the aggregates end up being out of date by 30 seconds or a minute. And the reason why we do that is you can actually write a ton of files in some particular directory and then update the directory once. And then, um, and then, some, and then later we'll update its parent and its parent. Um, so you get the, you coalesce together these writes and you, it ends up being very low overhead. 
And uh, is that done as a, a low priority kind of background task? So if the array is really, really busy, we actually wait until there was a little bit more spare capacity to then, or spare utilization to then. Uh, it's a, it's a background task, basically at the same priority as the rest of the task, but. But it's only you know. But there's only one of them per node, um, so it ends up you know it ends up being relatively lower priority in that respect because you could have a ton of a ton of concurrency on the front end. Right. Um, I but mean, it works okay if if you know of all the questions that need to be asked, right? I mean, because you you build this data structure to answer specific questions. I'm gonna. Can I get back to that in sure. just a second? Because I think that's a great question. Um, Oh, good, because I have follow-ups. <laughs> so this is so this this finding finding uh, uh, things that are uh, finding files that are touched in the last day. So what we call that is exclusions. So it's traversing the it's traversing the file system and finding things that are excluded. This is a bit of a contrived example, but I'm trying to, but I'm trying to still use the, 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 the aggregates that I have up here. So if you want to find the files, uh, or find the amount of space used by files that, are, that were written over a day ago. <laughs> so this is, a, again, a contrived example. But. No, it's not that contrived. This is how much media am I going to need for my incremental backup? I'd rather be looking for all the files with a .mp3 extension in the .usr tree because people backed up their iPods and I want to <laughs> kill them. <laughs> so in this particular example, you want to go find every file that's been modified yesterday. Um, and so, so in this particular case, you traverse down here, you look at temp, and you see, oh, it was modified today, but maybe there's something below it that was modified yesterday. You go down there and say, okay, there was nothing down there that was modified yesterday. Um, and so, so you've now added nothing to that um, list. And then you go down to movies, and you see that the max C time is yesterday, which means that everything in that entire directory structure has been modified um, yesterday or older. Thank you. And, and so you can actually take the entirety of this, and you know that all everything in that directory has, has been modified yesterday. And so you can actually just use this, uh, the total blocks field directly without, without having to traverse into movies. So this is actually using the um, concept of inclusions. Is there any way to tune the rate at which you're updating your aggregates? Because I can think of situations my clients have that 30 seconds or a minute might cost someone their life. We don't have that today, um, but it's certainly something we can look at going forward. Um, or do you have any way to flag either an external third-party app or a call saying, this file was immediately updated, perform your work instead? A kind of like NetApp's F policy type. Um, yeah, that's that's a good feature for going forward. I want to just quickly quickly wrap up um, with this. I talked about these two aggregates. We actually can do a lot of different aggregates. The times can be done uh, min and max time. You could have a min a time and find out the files that haven't been touched in a long period of time. You can do checksums to be able to actually do a diff-like functionality. Um, you, can do, you can aggregate permissions and find out um, which files are writable by Bob in a very fast way. The, the different sets of aggregates you can do are actually are quite diverse, and they can all be combined together and make your queries much richer that way. I think we're running low on time, so unless there are any last questions, I, I would like to wrap it up. If you're watching a directory, like just an LS, and a file's copied in it, is it an immediate return, or do you have to wait for that aggregate method to actually run before you see the new files in the directory? Oh, the aggregates are a background process that only affect the aggregates. The actual POSIX semantics of the file system are, are exact and immediate. OK. Yeah, this is really, it's just analytics. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're, you're looking for other files, other metadata operations. Okay.
Thank you very much. But did we did we not get to race? I don't think he has time. If you want to ask a couple of questions, it'll take a, a couple of minutes for these machines to boot up. I'm going to do a demo. Okay. So, so can I? So do I define aggregates on any set of metadata that's available? What, what do you mean? You know, I you know the <clears throat> essentially the aggregates are building a, a database that I can query for analytics. Right. And you know, is there some, is, are there limitations on what data is being collected that way, or is it the, all of the metadata? Right now, we have a specific set of aggregates that we have implemented. So we actually have the max seed time aggregate. We have a total blocks aggregate. We have file and directory count aggregates. Um, and that's actually it so far. Um, Okay, the additional so the additional aggregates we will implement in, in our you know in our weekly you know our biweekly releases going forward. So your your okay, aggregates aren't being used to report back <laughs> in place POSIX data. It is a separate. It's a separate structure. Okay. Okay, but if I if I literally want to find all of the MP3s that are people backing up their iPods or all the files that are you know untouched for between one and four hundred days or between 400 and 800 days, I have to wait for you to set up aggregates to do that? Yeah, we, you, we, will, we will implement those aggregates going forward. 